nerves. <laughs> That's welcome. Have an hors d'oeuvre. Welcome back to another episode of Trucking Together with Alice and Mark. Fun fact, in three miles, we will have a, put 100,000 miles on this truck since that we bought it. That is a fun it. fact. Fun fact, we are at 1,110,997 miles. Anyway. I've been thinking, and it get, that's, that's the dangerous part, because my mind is, my mind ain't quite right sometimes. <laughs> You're just now telling me that? <laughs> but this whole trucking thing, and I, I, I've been seeing people freaking out and trying to sell trucks for an absurd amount of money. I honestly think that that ship has sailed. Um, then, you know, rates and stuff and I see people flip it out I, I, I'm, here's the thing Mar the market's the market and you either you know sure you gotta fight for rates but man when the market's dropped and fuel's gone up what are you supposed to do I, I park it I mean you still have to make a living so I'll be that guy to tell you I mean the loads right now three three fifty a mile if you can't make money at three bucks 350 a mile then i guess you don't need to own a truck because the reality of trucking is it's a roller coaster last year's rates are not the new normal it never will be the spot market is a roller coaster so you can't this is why i am the way i am and i'll tell you guys this I don't feel comfortable going out and spending three hundred plus thousand dollars on brand new equipment and having a peace of mind of a warranty and all that. Not, not that there's anything wrong with that, because there's guys out there that can make it work, and, and, and it just for me it's added stress. I don't want to have to make that payment, and I don't have to work that hard either. Hey, Smokey. But anyway, I like old junk for a reason because it don't have a payment. Well, usually it don't have a payment. Um, I like to buy things for cash when it comes to equipment. I don't like financing equipment because if I have to park it, it doesn't owe me anything. So, hence why I just buy older stuff and I fix it when I need to fix it because it's cheaper for me that way. And paying three grand a month for a truck, paying $1,500 a month for a trailer, then paying another $1,500 a month for insurance on top of it all, man, that's a lot of money you got to put in equipment before you can even eat so that's my business model but I, I get that not everybody's comfortable with working on their own stuff to an extent of like rebuilding engines and putting clutches in and transmissions and stuff like that I don't have a problem with it if man put it together man can take it apart and fix it it's just if, if there's a will there's a way even for the novice guy go get you a service manual or download the um, whatever engine you have like for Cummins, the quick serve, and, and you got a whole service manual for it on your computer. And it, it's pretty well detailed. I mean, if you got a simple understanding of how engines work, then you can pretty much rebuild it. It's not that hard. It's a wet sleeve diesel engine. It's as simple as it gets. Now, as far as like rates go, I see guys complaining about rates and stuff, and I mean, there's nothing you could do if volume is down. It volume is down, just like this microphone that just came down. But there's nothing you can do about volume being down. If it's down, it's down. And we read uh, an article on FreightWave saying that you know shippers have overordered, they're overstocked, and this time of the year, things should be picking up already, but they're not. Being it's late March, it's literally almost April, things still aren't picking up. That's a sign for this year that it's probably not going to be as good as last year was. They're calling it a bloodbath. I'm a little bit more skeptical than that. I don't think it's going to be as bad. 
but for instance, if you had a $4,000 load on 700 miles, and today that very same load pays $2,300, yeah, it sucks. Back then fuel was $350 a gallon, $340 a gallon, now you're $525 a gallon. So yeah, it doesn't make sense for you to haul it, but if you're relying on spot market freight, that's just what you're gonna have to do if you wanna survive. Again, roller coaster, up and down, up and down. And I'm not telling anybody to go and haul this stuff. If you wanna sit and leave it sitting on the dock, by all means do it. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna haul it either. That's why I've paid off equipment. That's why we decided to buy a second trailer so we can have some variety because right now anything box, whether it's dry bed or reefer, is not that good. The other stuff has pretty much maintained its um, its level of rates. It hasn't dipped, it hasn't dropped, it hasn't really slowed down. Whatever it did slow down, it pretty much picked back up. So that's why I have a second trailer because I want to have variety. And if the other, if one or the other doesn't pan out, and I like one better than the other, then one's gonna go get sold. Uh, um, excuse me, I like to call it having options, not variety. Yeah, options. Well, variety too, because you can go haul flatbed loads or you can go haul a dry van load in this reefer. Well, the reef drive van guy can't haul a reefer load. And I'm not saying you can go and haul every single reefer or dry van load in a reefer because there's a lot of loads you can haul. But for the majority, you can haul a lot of dry van stuff in the reefer and then you can haul refrigerated stuff. So, just got to weather the storm. I mean, I was talking to Alice before I met Alice, about a year before I met Alice. Was, I want to say it was 2008, so it was about a year before I met Alice. I had a truck that got four, four miles per gallon. It had a Caterpillar in it. The truck made, that's irrelevant, but it made almost 1,000 horsepower to the ground, okay? It, made a, it had a lot of power. Uh, it was a W900 Studio Sleeper, 290 inch wheelbase truck, 18 speed. It was a C15 MBN block. I had marine injectors, cam, all that crap in it that I put in because I like horsepower. And the truck got four miles per gallon. It actually did better than stock because those MBN motors were turds. So my four mile per gallon truck, 2008, I lived in mid Michigan. I mainly focused my operations on running west coast. So I had to spend money. I had a reefer. We basically did whatever we could going out and dry, and a produce, I'm sorry, produce coming back. And our main focus at the time was running Arizona. Rates, it was hard to get two bucks a mile back then. And I mean, I was pretty new in the business for running reefer. I was a kid, I was 25 years old at the time, 24, 25, so 25 years old at the time. And I was still wet behind the ears, so getting a good freight rate, you know, it was almost unheard of back then, at least for me, because like I said, I was new to it and a kid, so people didn't take me seriously, I guess, I don't know. So if you got two bucks a mile, fuel skyrocketed to 450 a gallon, we were running for two bucks a mile, we were happy, and we made money with the four mile, mile per gallon truck. So if you can't make money today, with today's trucks that are getting more than four miles per gallon and at least three bucks a mile, then you should sell your truck. Because this is the reality of trucking. It is, it's trucking. It's a roller coaster. You shouldn't make financial decisions, serious financial decisions of purchases, equipment purchases on something like the spot market. Or YouTube. Or YouTube, whatever. <laughs> YouTube, I don't know, that just depends, I guess, if you have subscribers or not. I mean, if you're making money on YouTube, more power to you. It's no, probably... I mean, I mean the, the people that get into trucking because they watch some YouTube oh, well, channels. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's just... Some right. guys some guys put a lot more effort into it than they make it seem. They, they work their butts off, to, you know, and you guys just see the, the fun parts of it, so... I, I would just like to add that right now is not the time to start no. with authority and uh, if our circumstances were different we probably would have paused on reactivating ours yeah but we're no 
not to be like rude, but we know what we're doing and we, we're focused. We have a goal in mind and we're going to do it and it is what it is. But We are very disciplined people. We are. If you're, if you're trying to cash in on the rates, it's too late. It is too late. It's not going to happen. So, again, don't make bad financial decisions and go and buy new equipment. And I'm talking about like, you know guys that are paying three hundred thousand dollars for trucks brand new trucks right now because they can't buy a new truck and dealers are upselling them and they're charging you know absurd prices for these trucks and buying them back and you know reselling them for way more money if you could buy a brand new truck today for a hundred sixty thousand dollars that's a good buy but you're not going to that truck that used to cost one hundred sixty thousand dollars today is three hundred thousand dollars so you're not gonna make it you just if you're relying on spot market you don't have a dedicated deal that you're doing you're not gonna make it unless you work your butt off and you're living in that truck and you don't have a house payment or none of that you don't have a family that's probably the only way I do it that being said go buy an old piece of crap learn to work on it realistically what is one or an owner operator should know to do is work on his own equipment so buy an old piece of crap five thousand dollar trucks don't exist anymore but let's say five fifteen thousand dollar truck fix it yourself learn to work on it understand how everything works because then when it breaks down on you on the side of the road you can fix it yourself save money and keep making money with that old piece of crap why don't you remind people we paid for this in our trailers yeah we paid 23 grand for this truck and how much for our trailers we paid fifteen thousand dollars for our trailer we have two trailers and we paid seventeen thousand dollars for a flatbed. Really, on trailers, there's really not that much that can go wrong. So that's neither here or there. The truck is what's going to sink sink you, or you know, a reefer might sink you because reefers might be crap. And they, you know, when a reefer breaks down, it costs a lot of money. So I know I say so a lot, but so as an owner operator, learn to work on stuff learn to fix it yourself as much as you can buy the tools because eventually you know whether the tool is five thousand five hundred dollars or a thousand dollars if you own the truck and it's your bread and butter buy the tool because if it helps you get the job done and learn how to get it done yourself it's going to save you money down the line so learn to work on your truck don't make financial decisions based on a spot market because that is about the dumbest thing you can do the rates of last year isn't something you should base your rate your you know financial decisions off of it's just not because those rates are record setting they're they're probably not going to come back for a while they're probably not going to be back this year so that's all i wanted to say on that if you have a truck that's paid for no matter if you can get two hundred thousand dollars for it would i sell it I was offered 80 for this. There's no motor rebuild on it. It's 1.1 million miles. I'm not gonna sell it because I can't buy anything for 80. Why? I mean, I make a living with this. So, I like the truck too. I don't wanna sell it. Not for 80. Not for any amount that is because it feeds my family and it's been good to us. So. That's that. That's all I wanted to say. Adel, Alice, have fun editing that.
756 miles since we fueled. If I were to refuel this truck right now, I'll put it right at about 100 gallons, maybe 105 with the weight, uh, with how much fuel I have right now. So it really is good what, uh, what the Lyle meters think. It's pretty cool. It is pretty cool. Earlier okay, today, I, when we when I started out, it uh, had got as low as uh, 6.7, and I got it up to what was it, seven? And then now you've gotten up to 7.2. Like seven, yeah. Yeah, so keeping fault. keeping the boost under 20. It's my fault because I wasn't I was too tired at night to just kind of. Haha! I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. it. But we 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 recovered and uh, yeah, keep it keep that boost level down. And uh, I've been actually trying to keep it like under 17, 18. We we've, we've, we've been we've been doing all right. And basically, I take a full gear instead of splitting them. And then as I'm like going over the hill, I take a full gear and then I just let the truck coast, and that's making a huge difference. See, I, I split the gears because I'm I'll just different. Up. I split up too, but when I'm like, so let's say like this hill, we're going up over this hill, and I'm in a full gear, and I get to the top, and it's a ground, and it's like a decent drop down the other side, I'll grab the full gear and just get out of the fuel and let the truck coast. Like, without giving it any big throttle at all, I'll just let it coast and let it pick up speed on its own, that's what I've been doing. Well, I'm talking about when you're going up the hill, not the downhill. No, if I'm down shifting, I'll split too, yeah. Yeah, that, that's what I'm talking about. Well, I guess I'm, as I'm, I'm talking about taking like a full gear as I'm, as I'm like accelerating that waste less fuel. So I've been, when I drive, I've been doing um, about 65 to 66 miles an hour. I uh, imagine you're doing the same. That's what it looks like I to me. I haven't been using the cruise control and at all. And I'll do about 65, 66, like on flat to kind of keep the air dynamics of this truck in check. But if I can get pick up more speed, I will. You know, if, if it's a, if the truck is running free and I can feel that it's not using power and it's allowing me to go a little bit faster, I will. So I'm not trying to be a dick here and like you know people are coming to pass me and I'm like getting away from them. No, not at all. I'm just if I'm out here by myself, I'll use the truck's momentum to get a little bit more speed going. That way, if I have another hill coming up, then I got a better run at it. You know. So my, it's, all, my, it's, all, it's all like Freightliner's IPM mind game. You get a little bit more on the flat, and then when you're, as you're close to be let out. It's my driving style. I do the cruise, and when it wants to start building that boost to an unacceptable level, which for me has been right about that 20 mark, I kick the cruise off and uh, drive it like there's an egg under that throttle pedal. And uh, both ways, I think, are working, because... Yeah, we, we've gotten it up, and, uh, and that's kind of how I do it too. It's just yeah. everybody has got their own style of, of doing things, and they both work just fine. So. And on these these half turns, Martin and I were talking earlier, and I should have been filming. But no, I wasn't. Uh, we're figuring three hundred dollars saved. Well, on, it's uh, not just fuel fluctuates; at least th at least three hundred dollars. Yeah, on, on these half turn weeks I've been doing. So if we did a full turn week, which been virtually impossible since we've come back to SEVA. Uh, it'd probably be more like 600 bucks. So I, I'm good driving a little slower and watching my uh, my boost and those things uh, for that extra extra little money in the pocket. Yeah, so it's also kind of like a discipline thing for you. You know, mm -hmm. you're, you're being, it's less wear and tear on a truck. It's easier on this old truck and it's more money in the pocket. And you're just kind of learning a different way to drive. Who would think it? A big old W900 getting seven miles per gallon. W9.
right, guys, we've made it to Denver. The time has come for us to say farewell to our newer trailer. First one since November. <laughs> we'll miss it, so. Uh, fun fact, the truck rides a whole lot better with these newer trailers than these old ones. I think the old ones must all have blown shocks or something because uh, big difference when you're trying to sleep back there in the uh, vibration factor. So uh, yeah, we're, we're gonna say farewell to this one and uh, see, see if they have a load for us. Um, they might not, it's uh, really early here. I, I, uh, I don't know what time it is, but uh, we're way ahead of schedule. Like it's Friday night and I think it's like, I'm going to guess we're about 12 hours early for our load. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see. I am good either way. But if they had something, may I be a little bit better. I don't know if they have a load for us. Uh, if they do, that'd be awesome. If not, we're going to go to bed. <laughs> so either way, either way, we're good. Um, for Martin's sanity, I really hope that we get a good trailer. It's uh, slowly driving him mad, <laughs> I think. I think it is. If you watched the uh, couple videos ago, it's, it's getting to him. Just a little bit. All right, let's go. Let's go check in and uh, see if they got anything for us. Talk about it. Talk about it. Talk about it. We got a. It's like eleven o'clock, ten o'clock our time. We got a load coming back. Wow, it's, it's crazy. We just walked in there and they're and like. I think it's a freaking new trailer they, too. <laughs> they made paperwork just magically appear. No, I think it's a new trailer too. Like really? Yeah, sixteen thousand, sixteen thousand five hundred pounds. Huh. Wow, it's almost like 14. I, I'm kind of all these weeks of things not going right, and all of a sudden everything's like going right. I think it's because probably these are left over loads, like maybe had nobody to pick them up. Like, but no, this trailer isn't a door, so they could unless they've been loading it since freaking <laughs> yesterday. Maybe. Who knows? All right, fun. We'll go get um, we'll drop this one in 14. Then we'll go around back, hook up, and do all our safety checks, and then we'll let the dog run around. And, and then I'll go to bed, because I told you I was going to be robbing myself of sleep right here. I, I thought I was going to get a nap. I know, right? Because we, uh, we used to be, I only got like Th This never hours. happens. This never happens. Never.
brand new trailer you always dreamed and hoped for. Yes, it is. Congratulations. has been spared from losing his mind. That's crazy. Like, guys, I literally, this is in the future, what you guys are watching, but I literally just got done editing a video, totally complaining about this. And that video is gonna go out tomorrow. So this video is actually gonna be a few days after that. And <laughs> here I am complaining, and we have new trailers both ways. Um, Funny how things work out. <laughs> Yee! I don't think we've ever done this before, but. I think with your little discussion earlier, we should wrap this video up and pick up again tomorrow. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So, uh, the lighting's horrible, but that's what we're gonna do. It's late o'clock. Actually, it's not. It's 10.30 our time. Late o'clock? I like late that. Late o'clock. <laughs> hey guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for commenting and uh, catch us on the next one because you never know what will happen, right? Yep. Alright, we out. You see the drippy, I'm fitted up. Hop in my car and a giddy up. Secure the bag, yeah, I get the bus. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. You see the drippy, I'm fitted up. Hop in my car and a giddy up. Secure the bag, yeah, I get the bus.